goodwill toward men will certainly be the thing. For Johnny Carson, the 1950s were a time of growing professional success. He moved to California, worked for Red Scouton, and he and his first wife started a family. When Johnny was welcomed to The Tonight Show in October 1962, he began the reign as king of late night that's lasted to this day. Over the years, the show has changed very little, and it has become a staple of American culture. Is it true, John, that, that when you were first approached about doing Tonight on a regular basis, you weren't too crazy about the idea? I turned it down. I was doing a show on ABC uh, called Who Do You Trust? It went from 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. It was the second show on the network, uh, and time-wise. People mm -hmm. forget in the 50s, television didn't go on until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You're getting up now at, what, 2 in the morning? Something like that. To come to work. The shows didn't even start until 3. I think Dick Clark's American Bandstand out of Philadelphia was the first show on the network. There was nothing. There were no morning shows at all. So we started at 3.30 to 4. So I did that for five years. It was very comfortable. It was a comedy interview, you know, with a little gimmick at the end. The gimmick was only there to get people. It was a reason for people to come on and make jokes. Sure. And, uh, you know, play, win a cookie or something, and that was it. So when the uh, initial offer came up to do The Tonight Show, I really was very hesitant. It was comfortable. It was an easy show to do. They were paying me very good money. And I said, why should I, you know, go in and try to try something else? Were you at all concerned when you started that this was... Oh, it was some kind of a, uh, a watershed for your career, that if, that if this didn't work, then Johnny Carson was in trouble, or if it did, then he was going to go on and, and become something else. Yeah, I've often wondered what would have happened when I took over, for example, the Who Do You Trust show I mentioned in uh -huh. 1955 or 56. 55. I was in California. I was out of work. I'd had a show on CBS. It went off the air. This show came up. I had three young kids living in California at that time, very small. And somebody said, you want to go to New York and do this game show? I've often wondered what would have happened if that hadn't worked. You know, if I'd have come back here in 13 weeks. What kind of answers do you give yourself? I have the slightest idea. I don't know what would have happened. I might have turned around and gone back to Omaha. John, is it fair to say that you leave, you leave Johnny Carson at the door and, and you put on a different person when, when, the, when the band starts? I don't know. Probably a different uh, uh, appearance only because I'm now performing in a sense. Uh, when I walk out, I'm the same person. I'm more outgoing on the air than I am when I'm off the air, from that standpoint. But many entertainers are, and especially those of us who deal in comedy. They're, Why do you think that is? Well, there have been volumes written about that, you know, about why comedians are lonely, depressed, rejected, hostile within themselves. I'm not sure all of that is true. It's that old thing, you know, they said, well, you must be suffer. you know. Every comedian used to come from the Lower East Side. And if you weren't beaten with a, with a, with a jack handle when you were young, uh, you know, and chased by uh, other groups and beaten up regularly, you couldn't be funny. I don't, I don't adhere to that philosophy. I don't think it's necessary. I don't know what makes somebody funny at all. I have no idea. It's just the way you look at things. You just used a, a number of adjectives that are generally ascribed to you when, yes. pe when people talk mm -hmm. to you. Does it bother you that people have that opinion of you? Sometimes. I think the people who know me, my friends, know me. And I can't worry about what other people think. Is that, opinion, is that an opinion you've arrived at after years of living with this aura of Johnny yeah, Carson, or yeah. is that something that no. was... No, I, I, I'm basically, I'm a shy person. I mean, some may first sound strange, but I am inside. I find large groups of people difficult to deal with. If I go in where there are 100 people in a room, I feel very uncomfortable. But I felt that way before I was ever on television, so that's nothing new to me. When you're young, people call that being standoffish or being conceited. They don't understand that you're uncomfortable. So I, I, I probably hide a lot of that uh, personally, but that doesn't mean that you're hostile, that you're, that you're cold and... Ed McMahon says, uh, Carson packs a tight suitcase. I read that. I guess that means you keep your emotions and your personal feelings sometimes under check, and that's true. He said you have difficulty showing your emotions. Probably, yeah. Probably true. I think I'm better at it now than I was, but I think that's true. So how does someone as shy as Johnny Carson thrive in the let-it-all-hang-out world of show business? Well, it helps if you can be someone else for a while, like Art Fern, Aunt Blabby, Floyd R. Turbo, or Karnak the Magnificent. We'll hear from them all when Time and Again continues. OPEC. 
What does an Irish chicken do? Let's talk about some of the people we've invited up here. Yes, I noticed this is almost um, embarrassing. Let's start with the one behind me, Art Fern's Tea Time Movie. Yeah. How did it get started? There was a guy out here years ago in California by the name of, I guess I could use the name, I say here in California, of course we're in New York, by the name of Charles Antell. He was on locally. He sold beauty cosmetics products. This is a mixture of uh, a lot of people in California in the early days, used car dealers, because uh, in California, for some strange reason I've never been able to understand, people who own automobile agencies have to be on television. Here at the Gut Hut, don't worry, if you got no credit, got no job, we don't care. Got a bad credit rating, we don't care. Got a prison record, we don't care. Don't expect to pay us, that's when we care. <laughs> to get to the Gut Hut, you take the Hollywood Freeway, to the Harbor Freeway, to the Long Beach Freeway, drive till you come to... Uh, fork, fork in, in the, the road. road. What about the guy over your shoulder, Karnak? I did that uh, originally, believe it or not. I did a show on CBS locally in 1952. And I saw this device, which is giving the answer or the question and then switching it, written by a fellow by the name of Carl Winston for, I think, Liberty or Collier's Magazine, both now gone. He called it Backward Quiz. <laughs> OPEC. <laughs> OPEC. What does an Irish chicken do? And Flappy. That again is a composite. I did a thing in W.O.W. in Omaha. In fact, somebody found a, a sketch of something I did on Carson Cellar in the early 50s where I was playing, well, you know, men dressing up as women. It's been a staple since Shakespeare was around and before Charlie's aunt. Uh, my mother used to hate that when she'd see me do that. <laughs> I guess it's, she felt it, you know. Her son was just <laughs> yes. yeah. going over the blind. He says, no, mother, you see, putting on a, a dress does not necessarily mean I have, I have personal problems. Did she come around? What? Did, Did she, she come around? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think she's really ever uh, come around with that. <laughs> Florida Art Turbo. He just came out of, uh, somebody had written a letter to some paper once, either the Daily News, or, you know, those letters to the editors, which are so funny. And it was, a, I don't want to say typical, but it was uh, kind of a, a rube who got everything a little bit out of sync. All American, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah. There's even news in the morning. My wife gets up and starts watching Jane Pauley and Brian Gumbel. This deprives me of my God-given right to watch Leave It to Beaver reruns. <laughs> what will it take to replace Johnny Carson? See, everybody is, every, anybody's expendable. I mean, I'm not saying that out of any false sense of humility. Some are less expendable than I others. I remember when Parr did the show. Everybody says, nobody can replace Jack Parr. That's true. You know, Parr was Parr. Somebody else will come along and do the show. It happened to be me. If I leave the show, they'll say, all right, nobody can replace Johnny Carson. True to that extent that they will do the show completely different, differently than I will. What kind of person might it take to do that show successfully? I think it takes basically somebody who is a comedian. The ones who've been successful at it, going back to the days of Jerry Lester, Ernie Kovacs, Parr, Steve Allen, have all been basically guys who think funny, I think. You can do a certain amount of writing and make observations about things. They, they have a comedic mind. I think it takes that. Johnny Carson in 1983, talking about the kind of person it would take to replace him. Nine years later, NBC filled the bill with Jay Leno. Still to come, remembering The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, Ed McMahon and Doc Severinsen look back. And Johnny's excellent farewell when time and again continues. At one time, very long ago, Johnny Carson was a struggling young comedian himself. I don't know. If we made the bet, I'll pay it. <laughs> you know me, Fred. What? What are you calling a cheap crumb? I'll pay you the bet. Look, Fred, I mean, I thought we were kidding anyway. All right, if you want the dough, you can have it. All right, go ahead. Take it, Fred. I'll pay for the thing. Go ahead. He did not forget his early days, and since he's been on The Tonight Show, he's boosted the careers of scores of young comedians. You know that guy, Jay Leno? This is him when he first appeared with Johnny in 1977. Your mother and I hunted wild dogs for food. We had nothing when we were your age. <laughs> Check out Steve Martin, circa 1977. Buddy Hackett's on the show. He's about a million times funnier than I am. But tonight we're getting paid the same. And when you think of George Carlin, you probably think of him like this. But do you remember him like this? This is Carlin on The Tonight Show in 1965.